So hello and welcome to uh, Jam Pro Antennas and Alan Dick Broadcast presentation. In this presentation, we're going to talk about broadband antennas and their benefits. This is uh, Damon Hall. Um, I'm here to try and get an understanding of the benefits of broadband antennas. And Ben's going to help me do that. So go ahead and give me some uh, basic information, Ben, on how to, um, you know, what the benefits of broadband are and how they can be used. Okay, so um, the main thing um, that's good with a particular broadband antenna is it allows the transmission of multiple channels via the same antenna. So instead of having single channels, um in a system so you'd have to have multiple antennas and transmission lines you can use one antenna um, that has enough bandwidth to transmit all of the frequencies that you require um, it's still typically in band so for radio or tv uhf vhf fm um, but it means that you don't need multiple towers or multiple antennas at the very least um, okay. and the antenna and transmission line will support both analog and digital transmission. It doesn't doesn't really make any difference. Um, of course, there's always power and voltage limits on any system, but as long as you're within those margins, you can put as many channels as you want on. Um, I see you've got an antenna VSWR there. I believe that's the sort of reflected power that goes back to the transmitter and it's uh, not a good thing to have that's correct so with any rf system and particularly antennas we're always looking to have a low vswr and a vswr stands for uh, voltage standing wave ratio um, there's other terms as well like uh, return loss or reflection coefficient but they're all basically uh, giving an indication of how good a, a match the antenna is to the transmitter so um in transmission system, if you have the same impedance at the at the source and, uh, and at the and at the antenna, then you have the most efficient transmission of energy. Um, and it's, we talk about reflections because basically you want the energy from the transmitter to be transmitted from the antenna and not to be reflected uh, back to the transmitter. Not just because obviously if it's not going out of the antenna, it's not going out to the the, the receiving. Uh, location to where the people are but it means the energy that comes back to the transmitter can actually uh, potentially damage the transmitter or other equipment if it's high so um, mm. with antennas and, and other RF components we're always looking to have a, a low VSWR or um, a low reflection of energy um, so in a broadband uh, antenna that VSW has to not just be low across a very narrow band for one channel but it has to be good over uh, multiple channels uh, all the channels that you want to bro um, broadcast on. Um, okay. I see you've got uh, combiners coming up here. Um, they fascinate me and how all that power is uh, divided off uh, up to different antennas and everything. Um, some information about that would be very interesting. So the combiners here um, are the general term for the device that allows multiple frequencies to come together so um, nearly always you, the antenna system would have one maybe two coaxial lines but they feed the same antenna um, whereas as a combiner or the channels that you you may be wanting to combine you might want to combine only two frequencies but there are systems that can combine you know six ten twelve multiple frequencies so what the combiner does is it gets the output from each individual transmitter and it allows them to kind of add together to one output, um, which can then be fed into the transmission line and up to the antenna. And there's various types of combiners, uh, depending on, um, obviously power is one factor. So typically if the power is higher then the, the system needs to be, or the combiners need to be larger to handle the power, just like you need larger transmission line for larger power. Mm -hmm. But also you have, um, depending on the frequency, if the frequencies are very close together, then you need a combiner that um, is uh, provides isolation. It always has to provide isolation between the transmitted 
the transmitted channels. So if the frequencies are very close together, the combiner has to kind of work harder to provide that isolation. Um, and the combiners typically use filters, uh, like the next point, use filtering um, to direct the energy to the right location. Right. So um, the antenna at the end of the day has to be wide band to put up with all the different frequencies being sent to it. Correct. Yeah. Um, it can obviously be wider than, than needed, um, but it's always a bit of a trade off. Uh, like any engineering, it's always a compromise potentially. So if you have very wide bandwidth, sometimes the ultimate VSWR is not so good, or maybe the cost is very high, for example. So when you're trying to balance um, different solutions to, to different problems, um, you don't always need a full band antenna. Um, but um, you know, broadband can mean, can technically mean, you know, two channels up to infinite channels. Um, but normally broadband is, is some happy medium where the engineering and, and the economics kind of meet and, and obviously solve the, the immediate problem. Great, thanks. Separation of filtering. <laughs> um, of each thing allows all channels to coexist. So, yeah, that's all part of the same, uh, I guess. Yeah, so as I said, you, you, in the same way as when you just have an antenna and the VSWR, you want the energy to go out of the antenna and not back to the transmitter because, um, it, you know, the, the energy going back to the transmitter can damage the transmitter potentially. Um, if you have more than one transmitter in a combiner device, you obviously don't want one transmitter feeding into the other transmitter. So that's where isolation between the, the multiple inputs are, is also important. Um, the, the value depends according to... Uh, whether it's TV or radio and the frequency, but um, basically you need a, a level of isolation. And like any filters, if the frequencies are far apart, it's quite easy to provide that isolation because the, the, the you know you've got space in between the, the two frequencies. But as those frequencies get closer and closer together, the filters have to work harder, provide like a steeper cutoff between passing a frequency and stopping a frequency to give that isolation. Understand. So I guess for environmentally robust, um, I guess up in places like Canada and what have you, there's, it's going to get pretty cold and pretty icy. Um, can all these be uh, have radomes and be heated to stop icing? Most, most of our antennas will, can have radomes or de-icers or sometimes even, even both. Um, so obviously a radome provides a cover so that um, the ice will still form, but it doesn't form in areas that are, are going to uh, change the antenna characteristic too much. Uh, and then the ice is literally, it heats the, the element so ice doesn't actually form, it, it just doesn't get cold enough. Um, but the good thing with a broadband antenna is uh, typically what happens when you have a, any antenna and ice forms on it, uh, even if you have radomes, it still can change the ultimate tuning a little bit. Uh, so if you have a very narrow band antenna that's got a very, um, you know, good BSWR, but maybe only a, on a very small bandwidth, the ice can essentially change the tuning of the antenna. So you may find you have a very good impedance in the summer and then the ice comes in and it just drifts a bit. Um, and obviously if you have a narrow band and it drifts, then you're not on, on frequency anymore. Then maybe the antenna isn't, doesn't work at the frequency you want anymore. Uh, whereas if you have a more broadband antenna, it drifts still, but because you've got so much more bandwidth, it doesn't actually make much difference to the system. It drifts a bit and you know, the VSWR is still, still good. Um, so having a somewhat of a broadband antenna, um, it's also good in, in, yeah, in, in changing environment conditions. It can just be heavy rain or, or particularly ice. Understand. Great, thank you. Okay, yeah, so just to review, some of the, um, the benefits of the, of the broadband is, um, you, it means that you can have a single site for multiple users and multiple programs um, so you don't have to have um, uh, obviously the land is expensive and the towers and things like that so you'd only need one tower one land one one sort of building and yet you can have multiple uh, programs which means that you can um, obviously share costs for the infrastructure so your, your capex expenditure can be shared between multiple parties which just reduces it and of course again also operational costs um, are shared ongoing costs because again you've got multiple people sharing so overall um you normally find as you combine more and more channels obviously the cost reduces to each user um which mm -hmm. you know if people are willing to share that's a benefit um so you know pooled resource you can also have higher quality because you can kind of afford um 
maybe a system that is it gives a better engineering solution but it's more expensive but if you're sharing it it's it's not so bad um and it means you can you know pick the largest structure which generally gives the best coverage or the best location best build building um mm -hmm. if you're in if, you, if you're in a town and of course you know if you're buying a large system you can maybe bulk buy and get discounts and things like that so that's some of the the, the, the main benefits right um and again just looking at the combiner function as i said it combines multiple signals to a common antenna um and you have to have generally use filters um or other non-directional devices there are other devices that you can use that will um, still provide isolation like circulators or couplers um and then there's typical configurations um for combiners there's constant impedance which is probably the kind of high-end type of combiner which uses um, a few more components but gives a, a better um better performance uh, and generally we always use that if we're doing adjacent channel combining especially at um television because it's the only way to provide the high level of filtering and also provide the good impedance to the transmitters um, a slightly lower cost solution is a star point where um, you just have kind of filters that will meet uh, at a common output um, typically you can have four or five maybe six frequencies in a star point um, but it doesn't allow for really close chase uh, close space channels to be combined um because the isolation at very close is not so good but it, it's a lower cost solution and then okay. um some combining that's been used but not so common maybe now it was more in the days when they had analog television and were just adding digital was just essentially um coupling devices where you throw some of the energy away of the analog and most of the energy away the, of the digital but it was a way that you could get a, a digital signal on air quite cheaply without really changing much of your existing system um but probably yeah. the the constant pins and the star points are the, are the main ones that we'd, we'd be providing nowadays. Great. Starting um, to become clearer. <laughs> let's <laughs> hope so. Um, and in terms of um, Jampro antennas and Anandic broadcasts product line, um, in terms of the antenna models that we have that are, are focused particularly on, on broadband solutions, uh, we have slightly you know, different um, general um, Model so we have um, panel antennas, um, which uh, tend to be wrap around a tower, uh, and then we also have side mount antennas that are normally just mounted just one element um, uh, to the side of the antenna. So, so you know some of the models that we have is um, a JADP, which is um, cavity backed radiator, um, a JAHD, which is a arrowhead uh, antenna, uh, JCPD, which is a four dipole um panel uh jfcb is a crossbow and all of those actually all of those are actually circularly polarized antennas which is fairly common for fm uh, you know, the majority of times we're providing a circularly polarized signal um, but we also have some linearly polarized panels like the jfvd or jf um, jhvd um which um is just uh, dipoles um and then on the side mount we have um a jswb this can be pretty broadband um, and high power um, we, and we have a, a JCPB that's uh, maybe slightly lower power uh, both of those are circularly polarized uh, and then again we have like a linearly polarized single polarized like a JBVP which is sort of a vertical dipoles or um, a Java which is um, a log antenna or the log, or the log periodic yeah. yeah the log periodic that's right mm -hmm. uh, for very directional um, and so, you know, here's an example. Um, I won't go through all of the models in, in a lot of detail, but this is, you know, the, the JADP, the cavity backed antenna. So you can see an image there um, where you have a, quite a big reflector. This particular um, particular antenna has a, it's called a cavity because it actually has sides to the screen. It's just the way the antenna works. Um, so comparatively, it's quite a large antenna. It's probably one of the larger panel antennas, um, but actually the performance is very good because of that, because we have, uh, more ways of controlling um, and this antenna we have models that um, for FM radio but actually it, it is also used for TV in band um, band one and three as well um, we have versions of that um, and this this is a very high performance uh, antenna it can and have multiple configurations you can have single or dual feeder systems um, and really it's, it's full band this is a full band uh, for FM 
uh, antenna. So it, really, it's only the power limit input is um, your, is the limit of the, this particular antenna. There's not there's not any sort of narrow banding at all, um, and it's got very good what we call axial ratio, which is like the ratio between the horizontal and vertical polarization, which is often specified. Um, and with you can see here with four four panels around the structure we can get a very good omnidirectional pattern obviously if we put you know one panel in one direction it will be directional um and it does all the all the things that most around tennis do it's you know can do hd radio um and it it can can be used for different combining styles um and and uses high quality materials like brass and stainless steel and copper so that um it will last a long time we have antennas um provided this this panel that's probably provided in the 70s and still in service so you know getting on for 50 years um so yeah they're very robust um maybe you could uh, explain a bit about uh, single or dual feed systems what does that mean okay so with the with the antenna especially these big panel antennas um the way the signal uh, gets to the antenna is via um a, a large main feeder especially if you're combining lots of channels and you get a high power um you'll want a, a large coaxial typically coaxial cable that will go up the tower from from the building up to the top of the antenna um and when it gets there when you have all these panels obviously the energy has to split out to each of these panels and so we have we have power dividers uh, in in the top of the tower um these maybe have the single input and maybe split to two ways or four ways or eight ways it just depends on the antenna design and we you can have multiple uh layers of that multiple levels uh depending on the number of panels so you might say for example this this antenna you can see four panels but the full antenna maybe has you know four bays of that so four of those stacked on top of each other or maybe eight so you'll need a power divider that will split maybe four ways and then four again and, and maybe four again to feed the antenna um right. now what you'll do especially on these bigger antennas where you we might have multiple frequencies you you might want the ability to do maintenance on the antenna or even climb through the antenna nowadays climbing through the antenna there's obviously high rf so you have to manage that so if you only have a single feeder obviously it's a single point of failure so if the feeder is damaged um through whatever reason um then you'll be off the air whereas if you have two feeders going up the antenna and uh, typically the way that would be um, done is you kind of split the antenna into an upper half and lower half and one feeder will feed the upper half and one will be the lower half um, mm -hmm. and you'll have uh, a switch device in the transmission line uh, in the transmitter room typically a, a patch panel with a splitter and you can if needed you could switch the power to one half or the other half although normally obviously both halves would be fed um, yeah, that makes sense yeah. yeah so it's it's basically having some redundancy in the system so that you know if there's a problem with any part of one half of the antenna or transmission line um you can switch that off and you can someone can go and climb and check that it's uh, you know go fix it or check that there's a problem it could be anything from an air leak to obviously a lightning strike damage um or just you know even 50 years old although some of our systems last that long um you know in very bad mm -hmm. environments it may not last 50 years um not all of them uh, so you know you may need to do just maintenance as well um and the other thing it allows is if you need to if this antenna is um not say at the top of the tower uh, halfway up the tower uh, for example and people need to climb through to go above it um the rf may be too strong but what you can do is you can switch to one half the people can kind of climb up to halfway very quickly and then switch to the other half and then climb through so it doesn't completely reduce the rf but it it reduces it to um, a much lower level and a much shorter time period so that uh, um, they don't get overexposed. Um, oh, so it makes it a, a flexible environment. Yeah, that's right. And most big systems, mm -hmm. most most customers will, will, it'll be sensible for them to have a dual feeder systems. And we have some customers and some systems, particularly if it's high power, that um, have even four feeders feeding the antenna, the end antenna may be split into quarters or some other arrangement. But um, just maybe to handle the power and give you know ex extra redundancy in case there's a problem okay interesting stuff um and then so yeah this is an example of a you know i talked about the panel this is an example of um the side mount version uh, mm -hmm. so this is a jswb this is again very high quality antenna uh can handle very high power um even a single element can handle um i think it's 30 or 40 kilowatts even for a single element um mm -hmm. 
and it's it's designed to be a side mount so you only need one of these per level rather than the panel antenna you know kind of had four elements all around whereas this just has one at each level um and still has a, a good uh, azimuth pattern so you know, pretty omnidirectional uh, and again this is has very good vswr performance um covers pretty much the whole band um and 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 can work um uh, with the ices as well uh, so this is just another option uh depending on the exact details that you need interesting and then on the tv side just to, to kind of complement the radio side we have um also many many panels panel antennas so we have like the jh uh, JUHD or the JUVD, which are again horizontal. That, that's the HD is horizontal and the VD is vertically polarized. So again, linearly polarized. Um, mm -hmm. We also have um, some circular or mixed polarization. So we we have a JUED, where the E stands for elliptical. Ellipticals where you have both horizontal and vertical polarizations, but not at the same ratio. On purpose, you may put more power to the horizontal or more power to the vertical. So. Um, if you kind of imagine a circle with two axes, then if it's more, you know, one axis has more than the other, you don't get a circle, you get an ellipse. So that's why it's called elliptical. Um, and we have a JUXD, which uh, has the ability to change the polarization from the, uh, the uh, transmitter building and also the same for the JUPD. It's just different ways of implementing that. They're all UHF panels. Um, and then we, we have a range of VHF um, panels as well um like the jhd hv2 and hv4 um and then the the, the vertically polarized version the, the jvd versions um so this is just two or four dipole panels um and we have a we have a kind of high quality slightly higher cost version and a lower lower cost version in the jr uh, model um and they just provide linearly polarized signals um for vhf band band one or three um and sometimes fm as well but mainly band one and three uh, and then we have the jcpd and the jadp which are circularly polarized panels um, and then as well as panel antennas we also have uh, slot antennas um, slot antennas traditionally were narrow band devices single channels you know six megahertz eight megahertz only um, and then over time people uh, made what they called a, a broadband slot which was really two channels um, which we don't really think is broadband um what we think we call our broadband slot will cover you know over 100 megahertz of bandwidth um some of them have covered nearer 200 megahertz of bandwidth um and so you know instead of one channel or two channels you're doing 20 30 channels um and the main models we have depending on power are the the, J the jms broadband or bb or the jsh which is higher power bb um and so the the slot antenna, the, the advantage of that is it's just physically smaller than, than a panel antenna. Um, so uh, where weight and wind load is important on tower, um, you, it's a device that still gives good bandwidth, but can also maybe be installed on a tower where a, a panel antenna would be too big. Um, so and then, every, every conceivable uh, option for depending on the coverage needed. Yeah, and, and, and the situation and the, the mechanical situation and the electrical situation, we have different models. Um, and, and even within each model, we have options in terms of the gain and the pattern and things. So, you know, it's, there's, there's levels, more levels of detail than, than just what I'm showing. Um, yeah. And as well as just panels, uh, panel and slot antennas, there's some other types of antennas as well. There's what we call a JAT, which is a, a super turnstile antenna, um, and a, a, a JVDC, which is a... Um, a cardioid uh, antenna, vertically polarized cardioid antenna, which has um, been used a lot in the UK, actually. Alan Dick Broadcast has provided many of these to the broadcaster there. Um, so to give, just to give an example, so this is the, the slot antenna, uh, the broadband slot. Um, so if you see it's physically quite small, it's really a, 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 a pipe with, with holes cut in it. That's the slot cut in the, in the rigid line. Um, mm -hmm. So you can see the bandwidth um that we're getting is a lot more than one or two channels um and 200 plus yeah, yeah 200 plus as, as we provided uh, i mean typically it's about 120 and maybe 130 or 40 um which is normally good to cover um it's normally more than what most customers need but um 
Mm-hmm. It, it gives you flexibility. You may be on one frequency now and has to change, as we've seen, for example, in the, in the repack in the US, is, you know, changing frequencies. Maybe people don't know exactly the final frequency they might end up with. So, having some. So, back- I, yeah, I guess uh, Jam Pro and Alan Dick can help the customers. Um, uh, they can recommend the best antenna for the particular project and the coverage needed and all that sort of thing and take into consideration all those different um parameters that need to be calculated absolutely yeah we have we have various um software and um programs that can provide uh, answers and and uh, indications of, of how the uh, antennas will perform um and you know give different options according to the customer obviously the customer they know they want an antenna but um you know when they want more than an antenna they come to us so that we can we can give them solutions rather than just products um and and you know we, we work with our, our customers very closely um mm-hmm. to, to, to give and some with some very solutions. big customers as well who need the sort of heavy duty uh antennas and large networks yeah i mean we 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 uh we're, we're not we're not um fixed on any particular customer we'll work with big small or medium um customers um you know we've worked from some of the various very biggest uh, like Archiva in the UK or or um, um, or, or CBS um, down to you know single mum and pup stations that just and, and one antenna and they just have one system and, and everything in between um, right. we, we have products for everybody you know high end low end um, low cost high cost really depends w- w- what you need um, so that's everything for FM TV UHF VHF and I believe DAB as well from uh, Alan Dick. Yeah, yeah, DAB, which is more common in, in Europe, obviously in, in the USA, uh, they tended to, for digital radio, they tended to do HD, which is still at mm-hmm. the um, band two uh, frequencies. Whereas in Europe, it's a lot more common to see, um, particularly band three DAB, digital audio broadcasting. Um, right. But yeah, we have products for all of those. Um, Excellent. And uh, yeah, just finishing off on the slot. So again, it can mm-hmm. provide different polarizations. Um, and again, analog or digital, it doesn't really matter. Um, different different patterns, many different options um, for environmental protection. And again, using good good quality um, materials. Um, and that's really a, a brief introduction to broadband and and why you need it. So um, I hope hope you're fully up to speed now, Damon. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thanks for that. And uh, anyone watching this, uh, please contact us if you have any questions. And uh, I guess we're finished there. Thank you.